Summary of Ego is the Enemy by Ryan Holiday. Ryan Holiday uses his book, Ego is the Enemy, to relate the negative influence ego has on our ability to make good judgment calls that help us achieve and maintain success in our personal and professional lives. In this video, I'll explain three of the best lessons from the book. Number one, know the role ego plays in your life. To illustrate how ego is the enemy, Ryan Holiday starts by defining what ego means. The ego we see most commonly goes by a more casual definition, an unhealthy belief in our own importance, arrogance, self-centered ambition. It's the petulant child inside every person, the one that chooses getting his or her way over anything or anyone else. The need to be better than, more than, recognized for, far past any reasonable utility. That's ego. It's the sense of superiority and certainty that exceeds the bounds of confidence and talent. From this definition, it becomes effortlessly easy to see why the rallying call and key takeaway from the book is the importance of understanding the role ego plays in your life, in your actions, decision, and in other aspects of your life. The author continues by noting that when we let ego cast its influence on our lives, the influence is always negative. Because of this negative predisposition, ego changes the nature of our reality, keeps us out of touch with it, leads to unrealistic expectations and other negative sentiments such as entitlement, resentment, negative thinking, and creates an inner self that relies heavily on external validation. The author especially emphasizes the need to become aware of how our egos influence the three most important areas of our lives, our aspirations, our success, and our failures. Key takeaway. Aim to become more aware of how ego influences various essential aspects of your life, such as your thoughts, decisions, actions, plans, etc. Because as Ryan Holiday points out, ego is the root of all challenges and problems. Most of us aren't egomaniacs, but ego is there at the root of almost every conceivable problem or obstacle, from why we can't win to why we need to win all the time and at the expense of others. From why we don't have what we want, to why having what we want doesn't seem to make us feel any better. Number two, guard against the influence of ego in these three critical areas of your life. In the book, the author notes that even though ego can negatively influence all areas of our life on a foundational level, because our lives are in one of three phases, we need to guard against the influence of ego in three important areas. Aspirations, success and failures. The author states, at any given time in life, people find themselves at one of three stages. We're aspiring to something, trying to make a dent in the universe. We have achieved success, perhaps a little, perhaps a lot. Or we have failed, recently or continually. Ego is the enemy at every step along this way. In a sense, ego is the enemy of building, of maintaining and of recovering. To guard against ego in these three important areas, the author gives the following advice. 1. Aspiration phase. According to the author, when you are aspiring to achieve something, or as Ryan Holiday puts it, to leave your mark on the world, you need to become extremely aware of how ego influences your ability to see yourself and your capabilities realistically, rather than through the shaded glasses of ego. Holiday notes, in this phase of aspiring, you must practice seeing yourself with a little distance, cultivating the ability to get out of your own head. Detachment is a sort of natural ego antidote. It's easy to be emotionally invested and infatuated with your own work. Any and every narcissist can do that. What is rare is not raw talent, skill, or even confidence, but humility, diligence, and self-awareness. As the author notes, when ego is in play, it becomes challenging to have an honest and realistic view of your abilities in areas of your life, related to your aims and aspirations in life. To guard against ego in the aspiration area of life, the author offers advice such as having a clear mission broken down into simple action steps. He further notes the importance of continuous learning, practicing practicality instead of passion, because passion often leads to unwise choices being self-restrained, living in the present moment, and more importantly, putting in the work. 2. Success Phase When discussing how ego affects the success we achieve in our lives, the author notes that in most instances, once successful people, businesses, marriages, careers, etc., failed because of an egotistic mindset. 
When success begins to slip from your fingers, for whatever reason, the response isn't to grip and claw so hard that you shatter it to pieces. It's to understand that you must work yourself back to the aspirational phase. You must get back to the first principles and best practices. To guard against the intoxicating and ego-feeding nature of success, the author states that we should guard against ego's short-term view tendencies by embracing the principles of continual growth and learning, having a realistic view, reconnecting with the aspiration, becoming self-managerial, cultivating deeper self-awareness. Keep to your principles, and more importantly, remember the importance of remaining focused on what matters the most, putting in the work. 3. Failure the author notes this of failure. No one is permanently successful, and not everyone finds success on the first attempt. We all deal with setbacks along the way. The way through, the way to rise again, requires a reorientation, an increased self-awareness. Our own or anyone else's, we need purpose, poise, and patience. He goes on to note that since failure is an inevitability, we must prepare ourselves to deal with it with responsibility, strength, and humility. In failure or adversity, it's so easy to hate. Hate defers blame. It makes someone else responsible. Does this get us any closer to where we want to be? No. It just keeps us where we are. Meanwhile, love is right. Egoless, open, positive, vulnerable, peaceful and productive. When it comes to maintaining sanity and sobriety, in the face of challenges and failures, the author emphasizes the need to keep going, learning and putting in the work and effort and holding ourselves to high standards that we can fall back on when things are not panning out as planned. Number three, use the plus, minus and equal philosophy. According to the author, the plus, minus and equal philosophy created by MMA title holder Frank Shamrock can apply to all areas of life. Holiday notes, each fighter to become great needs to have someone better that they can learn from, someone lesser who they can teach and someone equal that they can challenge themselves against. The author notes that the efficacy of this philosophy comes from the modalities through which it works. First, when you learn from someone who is better, it checks and curtails the development of an engorged ego. Secondly, when you teach someone, the experience of being a mentor is a humbling one that also checks the ego. And thirdly, when you train with or learn from someone whose skill is equal to yours, it keeps you proactive and aspirational, always learning and growing instead of becoming complacent.